So in this section, we will discuss uh, the fluid mechanics approach. Um, and by that, I mean, how do we identify the important physical ingredients? How do we simplify um, a problem? And, um, and that leads to scaling analysis. So we are in one But two, the fluid mechanics approach. Approach. And for that, we will first uh, discuss non-dimensional numbers because you see these um, a lot in uh, fluid mechanics. Of course, they are not. Uh, you on, you're not only you don't only see them in fluid mechanics, but um, those are really, this is where um, they're used a lot. You, you, you see a lot of them. So A, non-dimensional numbers. So where, where do non-dimensional numbers come from? Um, well, they come from the observation that from a uh, from a mathematical point of view, physical laws or physical principles uh, should be independent on dimensions. So when we write an equation, the Navier-Stokes equation, Newton's second law, we use certain quantities. Uh, those, there is, those were arbitrary. Why do we take the velocity uh, as one of our um, unknowns and not just uh, momentum? Um, so there's a certain level of, um, of randomness uh, and of arbitrariness in the way we chose our variables and um, and the physical principle in principle should not be dependent um, on these um, on these dimensions on the on those variables and the dimensions on those variables in in particular so physical principle should be independent on arbitrarily chosen um, quantities um, and dimensions. So the units that we use the most are, um, the dimensions we use the most are length, time, mass, um, so that would be meters in terms of unit, seconds, kilograms, uh, and so on. So our physical law principle shouldn't depend on these. And therefore, here come our non-dimensional numbers. And therefore, um, the behavior of the physical system should be able to, we should be able to write the behavior of the physical system in terms of quantities that do not have dimension. So of non-dimensional numbers. So one can describe the behavior of a physical system in terms of parameters that do not have dimensions, which we call non-dimensional parameters. Parameters with no dimensions, which we call non-dimensional parameters, and usually these are represented by the symbol pi. A non-dimensional parameter in generic terms would be represented by um, by pi. And so again, why um, are these non-dimensional numbers so important in fluid dynamics? Um, and that is because in fluid dynamics um, there are many competing um, physical um, phenomena or quantities, um, physical forces. Um, and so the ratio of these, which will be uh, written in terms of non-dimensional terms, often allows us to simplify the problem. So they allow us to quantify um, the relative strength of, um, of different driving mechanisms. So why are, are these important? Uh, because they, qu they quantify the relative magnitude of competing physical mechanisms. And so these mechanisms, I mean, those physical mechanisms are inertia, for example, or viscosity, gravity, um, surface tension. So think inertia, 
viscosity, gravity, surface tension, and so on. Okay, so how does one find uh, those relevant uh, physical parameters? Um, so there are two ways. Um, one which is more systematic and which you can find in uh, the Kundu book and one which is a little bit uh, less systematic and it's, it's the one which I prefer. So the first one is I would, what I would call a dimensional analysis and the second one is an, a scaling analysis. And so we'll start by discussing the first one which is a dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis And uh, the important theorem that you may have heard of is the, Buck uh, is the Buckingham Pi theorem. The Buckingham Pi theorem. And the Buckingham Pi theorem is really a direct application of uh, whatever we've discussed here, huh? the fact that physical principles should be independent of arbitrarily chosen dimensions. Um, okay, so um, let's consider a physical system. So consider, so if that helps, just think about our stratification problem uh, a simple stratification from before. Now let's say that we can describe its behavior. Um, so we can express or describe its behavior in terms of m physical parameter. So in terms of a number n. So m is an integer number. It's one, two, three, four a number m of physical parameters. So these parameters could be uh, the dynamic viscosity, it could be the density of a fluid, or the, dens or the density difference in a stratified fluid, it could be a length scale, um, a velocity, if there was um, a, a flow of a characteristic velocity, it could be surface tension, it could be gravity, and so on. So all of these numbers, so those quantities, those are physical parameters, and they do have units. So if we have, if we can describe our system in terms of a number m of physical parameters, and these m physical parameters, they include a number n of uh, independent units. So these. M uh, parameters include N, so a number N um, independent units. And ind independent units are meters. For instance, seconds, kilograms, um, Kelvin, um, those are independent units. But for instance, um, units of velocity, meters per seconds, those are not independent. Or a Newton, which is a kilogram meter second minus two, is also not independent, is not independent of meters seconds and kilograms. Huh? So you have to take you can express these in terms of n independent units. So if you have such a system, then the Buckingham Pi theorem tells you that you can describe uh, the system in terms of m minus n independent non-dimensional uh, numbers. So if you have such a system, uh, the behavior 
of the system can be described in terms of so m minus n independent non-dimensional numbers and so we can call these numbers pi 1, pi 2, pi m minus n. So this is the Buckingham Pi theorem. And this theorem has a corollary which is oftentimes more used than the theorem itself. And that is the following. So for the same system, if we call p the number m minus n, so p is equals to m minus n. So usually what we can do is that we can express then one um, of the um, non-dimensional group will be a function of the p minus one others. So pi p, the last one for instance, will be a function of pi one, pi two, all the way up to pi p minus 1 um, and that is used mostly you will see it mostly in the case when in particular if p is equal to 1 then that means you only have one non-dimensional group which is therefore a constant. Okay, so all of this is quite abstract, so we'll take um, one example.